Hey, welcome back everybody. Well, things are starting to look a little different in the shop and I am really excited about that. I have um, kind of been dreaming of this for a long time and now it's sort of reality, but I've got a problem. I've got something that's looking like an airplane and I got a set of molds that I don't have room for. <laughs> so I need to figure out something to do with that. Um, I have a pretty large shed in the backyard um, that's destined to house these molds. Unfortunately, right now, it's full of all kinds of other stuff, mostly mine. So I need to go through that and um, reorganize and probably just get rid of a bunch of stuff. It's uh, a bunch of model airplane stuff and uh, stuff I've been hanging on to forever. And I'm sort of getting to the age where if I haven't used it in a year or two, it probably just needs to go. So that's sort of the mission for the next short term is to uh, figure out what to do with the mold so I can have a little bit of room in here. What I think I'm gonna do for maybe a week or so is I have a buddy who very generously well, let me put this in his hanger. So this is going to go in the corner of his hanger. You know, it'll stand straight up on the, basically on the firewall. And we'll strap it to the wall and it can stay there for a week or two while I get the back shed all done, um, which is great. So it won't take up very much room in his hanger. He's helping me out a huge, huge amount and I can keep working. So I, I really want to keep pressing forward here. So what I've, what I've done um, since you last saw it is actually not much. Um, I've trimmed the cockpit of the fuselage back to its rough final dimension, which is about an inch and a half lip. So you can't see it obviously because the canopy surround and the canopy are sitting on there. And then I've marked out uh, the rough trim line for the canopy and I'm gonna get that mated to the fuselage. Once that's fit nicely, I'll cut the area out where the canopy goes and start working on getting that bonded in. So uh, just baby steps, but we're moving forward. And then I've got to start obviously doing all my exterior tape seams too. So I'll start on the top while I'm working on the canopy, eventually flip it over, get the bottom all done. And um, I'm gonna add some more reinforcement in the fuselage as well um, from the firewall back through the cockpit area. So it's coming out very light and um, I can easily add some extra plies in there for crash protection. So I figured I might as well do that. So I'm absolutely thrilled so far. It looks really cool. It looks like an airplane. I'm stoked on that, and uh, yeah, here we go. I was able to give myself a little bit more room in here temporarily, um, and I'm still working on the canopy. So I've got the canopy surround rough trimmed, and it's you can see it's clicoed in place, and the canopy itself's just sitting on there. Um, it's going to get bonded from the inside, so I'm just making sure that it fits properly. I don't cut too much of the surround away. So underneath the canopy, there's a, a blue trim line. I'll pull it off here and show you in a second. So I'm gonna start cutting out the inside <clears throat> and then uh, I'll fit the canopy up inside the surround, clico it all together, make sure it all fits and then get it all bonded in place. I'm hoping to get that done the next couple days or so. And I've started addressing some of the outside seams. So I sanded and taped that seam this morning and then uh, just started sanding back here. It doesn't need a whole lot there in pretty good shape, but just working, working a little bit um, from the front to the back. Uh, so once I get the canopy in place, I think I'm going to concentrate on getting all the seams done and then probably get the cowl at least dry fit on. I'll get it, um, it's going to go back in the molds and then I'll put a lip on it so I can put it together. And I don't know if I'm just going to put a couple screws in it for now or clico it or whatever, but I just need to get that obviously fit in place. And I found actually a place where I screwed up. Um, I didn't realize I did this until this morning, but um, you can see right here, I've got a nice dropout where the cowl fits up tight and butts up against the fuselage. And that was taken off the plug. There's a, a trim line on the plug that I did that. But on this side, apparently I never put any tape in the, in the mold. So there's no step there. So that's gonna be a little bit of extra work. Um, what I'll end up having to do is trim it flush and then come from the inside and lay up a lip inside the cowl and then come back and trip that, trim that, excuse me, and that'll make a step. So not a huge deal, just a little more work. And you know, one other thing that I didn't need to do, but whatever, that's okay. We'll keep going. Now I've got the canopy removed here and you can see the blue line is um, my cut line on the inside. Now you can see some places where it's a little bit thicker there and I actually moved the cut line a little bit. When I built the plug, I put down tape lines to serve as cut lines for the future, but um, 
you know, I wanted to move it a little bit. I want the canopy rail, I think, a little bit thicker. And the reason for that is because when I have my canopy release, and, and I'm still debating, I've, I've been thinking about it a little bit. I originally was going to hinge it on the right side, but I'm thinking now I might hinge it on the left side. And the, the reason for that is I can prop it open with my right hand and then use the throttle with my left hand for when I'm taxiing. So I'm imagining this thing's going to get pretty hot inside and being able to pull in a little bit of fresh air might be nice. So, but at any rate, um, I've thickened up the canopy rail on both sides and a little bit around the back just to give me a little more room. And I can obviously trim that closer if I need to, but for now, that's where I'm going to cut it. And uh, for those wondering, I use a, a cordless oscillating saw to cut. And believe it or not, I found that these diamond tipped um, blades from Harbor Freight cut carbon the best. So I've used just about everything out there and these work really, really well. Um, they come in a red package. I want to say that maybe the brand is Bear or something like that. Oh, yeah, right there. There you go. Bear brand. And uh, I've had this one on here for, geez, several weeks now, and it's still cutting great. So for those that are like to trim stuff, um, this works really well. I used to use a cutoff wheel, and I don't like that for various reasons. This is easier for me to control. Uh, I'm not worried about the cutoff wheel coming apart, and it doesn't throw stuff as much as the cutoff wheel does. So this just makes light dust. So I wear a respirator when I'm cutting or sanding, obviously, anything. So I'm going to get this trimmed up and uh, see how the canopy fits in there. And um, don't know if I can get it bonded in the next couple days. I realize I didn't buy the glue yet, and I don't think I can get the glue locally. So I might have to wait till next week. But at any rate, it's coming along, and we'll try to get it in there soon. Okay, I got the canopy rough fit in the surround. And you can see I've got the canopy clecoed to the surround right now. And I'm pretty happy with the fit. It fits pretty good. It fits nice and tight all the way around. I do have a couple of gaps, and there's a little bit of a gap here, and I've got a little bit of a gap. You can see it right there, so right there. But that just could be how I have, um, you know, it could be warped because of the way I put the Clecos on. I, I went around in the perimeter, and I could have put some stresses on it. So I'll pull individual Clecos out, get it to lay completely flat, but not really worried about that right now because right now I just wanted to get get it clecoed in there so I can trim, I'm sorry, mark the canopy glass and then trim the inside. So I'm only gonna leave it about a half inch bond line there because I'm gonna come on the inside and put more carbon to grab it. So this canopy actually comes down, you know, to almost here, which obviously is interfering with the lip on the fuselage. So I knew that was gonna be an issue and I cut everything oversize intentionally. But um, so far the fit up is actually going quicker than I thought. Um, I've been out here about oh, maybe three hours so far and I'm pretty happy with progress. So again, pretty nice and tight around most of it. It all looks pretty good. So I'm gonna pull the canopy back off, take a Sharpie and mark around the canopy and then measure a half inch back or so from that and then I'll trim the canopy and then it'll fit onto the fuselage a little better so it won't interfere with that inner lip. The canopy's trimmed now, and this black line you can see is the edge of the surround. So you can see how much extra meat there is there, quite a bit. So I'm going to come in, and um, I'm going to trim it oh, probably half to three quarters of an inch. And again, I'm doing that so that it will miss this lip. I want to leave as much of this lip as possible just for strength reasons, but um, I'm going to have to trim some of it back, but it's a, it's a fine line between the two. So I'm going to get trimming. Actually, I'm going to finish marking. I'm going to use a piece of tape, some three-quarter inch wide tape, and I'll, I'll mark that all off. See how much lip that gives me, and then, then we'll start trimming. Canopy's all trimmed now. <clears throat> that was slightly nerve-wracking. Um, once I got started, though, it was really no big deal. The only thing I did differently than I anticipated was I ended up going to a toothed uh, metal bit on my oscillatory sander instead of the diamond one. Diamond one cut okay, but it was just really slow. This actually worked pretty well, so um, don't know if that'll work for other folks out there, but it worked for me. So I've got it all trimmed up nice within a three quarters of an inch of the lip, except for the front here. I left it long. Um, just no real reason to trim that because the lip, the front of the fuselage is long, so it's not an interference problem there. So I think next it's going to go back into the um, the canopy frame and then. I'm gonna start sanding the edge here to get it ready for bonding. And I do intend to sand down into the canopy 
uh, roughly the width of the canopy surround. So what I'm trying to do is at the end of the day, once it's all bonded, I want the canopy frame and the canopy itself to have no lip there, or at least very little lip. So uh, I'm gonna try to get that as smooth as possible. So wish me luck on that, that's gonna be a chore. Okay, I've got all the glue smeared on there and it's ready to bond on. So I've got the um, surround ready. I'm just gonna drop it on, click it in place, and then I'm gonna set it on the fuselage and then let it cure there overnight. And uh, I'll, I'll show you what I'm gonna do, but I'm gonna tape it down tight so hopefully nothing moves. Fingers crossed, here we go. Bonded on and click it in place. And I've got the majority of the squeeze out um, cleaned up. I'm not terribly worried about that because the Bondo and paint line is going to come past that a little bit. So that'll all get covered nice. I put wax on the Clecos where it goes through the urethane into the canopy there. So I'm hoping that won't stick, but we'll see what happens. So pretty happy with that. And I'm going to, now I'm going to tape up all the edges to hold the canopy frame down tight. And then um, we'll pull it apart tomorrow and see how it looks. All right. Well, there it is, better or worse. Um, I think it's better. I'm hoping not worse, but you never know, right? Uh, nothing I don't think I can fix uh, with a little bit of body work. You can see the gap up here. It's just a little bit bigger than I would like, but um, got to remember the paint line is going to come up maybe three quarters of an inch or so. So there's plenty of room there to fill and fare that in. Mainly, I just want a nice smooth transition. Same for back here. Just a little bit of a gap, but again, um, that's going to get filled and painted. So. Overall, I'm stoked. It looks really good, I think. And uh, where I cut it earlier, I got some carbon on the inside of that, and I, uh, I V'd it out, sanded it, put a couple pieces of carbon on the inside, and then clamped that there for several hours today. Put some heat on it, so that's dry enough, obviously, to do this. Uh, later on, I will sand that out, V it out, sand it out, and then repair it properly from the outside as well. So it'll be actually better than new in that spot because it'll be more plies. So anyway, that's it. Um, we will open it up tomorrow. I'm not sure exactly how long this stuff takes to dry, but um, I'm thinking a good 12 hours ought to be enough. I used, uh, those of you that are wondering, I used Cicaflex 252, which from my old um, auto body repair days, this is a great windshield sealant. So I'm familiar with it, knew what to expect, knew how to use it. And um, I have all the confidence in the world that uh, it's going to hold that in just fine because that stuff sticks to everything including you and your rags and your clothes and whatever else it happens to get on it never comes off so anyway there we go one major step done all right it's the next morning and good news the canopy didn't stick well didn't stick to the fuselage the canopy stuck fine to the surround um but I'm happy that my Clecos that I waxed up, um, you can see they got a little urethane on them, but they released just fine. I was actually really worried about that. Urethane sticks to everything. It, it bonds remarkably well to everything. So um, I was happy that those released. But um, here it is inside. And um, you can see where I've gone in and cleaned out the squeeze out last night before I bound it in, or uh, Cleco it in place. So it's all good. Looks great. It's uh, super stiff. It's cured and I'm happy. So uh, now I'm gonna trim back the inside tape a little bit and I'm gonna work on um, basically capturing the inside of the lip to the carbon surround with more carbon. So that'll get a little maybe two inch wide strip, you know, all the way around. And then uh, essentially the canopy frame is done except for the hinging and the release mechanism. But um, still debating whether or not to put some core in the front here. Um, it's actually really stiff now that the canopy is bonded in place, but I still may put a stiffener in there. I'm not sure yet. We'll, we'll figure that out later, I suppose. So, all right, there it is. Well, there she is, guys. Um, couldn't resist taping the cowl on to get a, a beauty shot. That's the first time I've had it all together, and uh, I like it. Definitely sexy. Um, from this angle and being outside here, you can see that 5% gray tint to the canopy. And uh, I wasn't sure about that when the canopy company tried to talk me into that, but I'm really glad I did. Actually, it turns out that um, that's gonna be fantastic. So it looks real dark there because we're looking inside the fuselage, but if you look through the canopy, it's got about a 5% tint. And I think that's just the right amount. Hopefully that cuts down a little bit of glare and uh, makes things a little more bearable. So 
Anyway, another shot here. You can kind of see what's going on. And uh, nice progress lately. I'm really happy with how things are coming together. Um, so yeah, there she is looking fast. All right, I'm going to roll it back inside and uh, flip the fuselage over and start working on the bottom seam. So that's it for this video. Um, next video, hopefully I'll have the cowling all fit. That's my goal. Is I got to get the firewall trimmed up, or not the firewall, but the, the cowling and the fuselage where it meets at the firewall trimmed and get the cowling fit upper and lower together with a bonding lip and then bolt it onto the fuselage so it can basically sit there in one piece. So again, thank you guys for all the the likes and the comments i really appreciate it and all you new subscribers uh, hopefully we'll keep that rolling we'll see you soon later